Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about 1984, uh, written by George Orwell, a very long time ago. This is chapter one. Um, if you haven't read this yet, uh, hopefully you're here to learn more about it. I've taught it for a decade and I'm very excited to do this series. Um, I have a lot of experience teaching it. I have I had great teachers who taught it to me and hopefully I can pass on that information. Um, and secondly, if you haven't read this book and you're just beginning, I would suggest watching a couple of movies to get you in the mood uh, to get into reading this dark and dreary book that is important to our current uh, society right now. And those two books are, or those two movies are V for Vendetta and Children of Men. V for Vendetta will introduce you to Guy Fox and that um, anonymous mask. And uh, Children of Men uh, will introduce you to a totalitarian society also in a different form. So there's two movies that can um, that I would suggest go along great with this book. Um, so watch those, um, but also watch this. <laughs> so we'll start with chapter one. We're introduced to Winston. Um, he lives in Oceania, which is formerly London, England, um, or, and maybe some surrounding areas. Uh, we are introduced to the fact that the party is now in charge and Big Brother is the head of that party. Okay, so Big Brother says something, it goes. It's law. That's it. You are not allowed to think in the society. Um, a small group of people controls everything in the society, and that's the inner party. And um, even within that, there's a smaller group of people who are in the inner party that are even more in control. And Big Brother is the figurehead, kind of like that Uncle Sam figurehead, constantly watching you. You are constant, un constantly under surveillance in the society. You are not allowed to think in the society. You have an assigned job. You must be your, your worker bee and continue through the day in this dark and dreary society. And we're introduced to Winston Smith, our protagonist, who is in this dark and dreary society of constant surveillance. In your homes, you have a video screen that monitors you at all times and reports back to the party. Um, and Winston decides to commit a crime. And it's thought crime. He starts to think. And um, he starts to remember uh, the old times and what the countryside in London looked like and whatnot. He remembers this because he was around before this party took over. So, but he cannot reconcile his memories with what he's told to believe. So this is where the thought comes in. And when he writes down his thoughts in this diary, when he begins this diary, he's essentially committing a crime which will lead to his death, and he's leaving evidence for proof that he should be killed. So it's very fatalistic from chapter one, meaning that you know that Winston thinks he's gonna die for committing this crime. It's instilled in him that he is no longer allowed to think for so long that he knows that by writing this down, he will die and it will be used against him at some point or another. He's introduced to, we're introduced to Julia and O'Brien, so Julia is a dark-haired girl that makes him feel uneasy and uncomfortable when he meets her. That's all we know in chapter one. Uh, we meet O'Brien, who's a member of the inner party, and Winston kind of likes him, but he's unsure. And you're introduced to these big ideas that Big Brother is watching you, always. Watching you. You cannot do anything that Big Brother doesn't know about, okay? Uh, you're introduced to these lovely ideas. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. That's important because these are all examples of double think. So in the society, they have dumbed down. That's the best way to put it. They've dumbed down their society to the point where they remove words from their language. Okay? So if something is... Um, if you're happy you wouldn't say that um you would say you're unhappy so there's only happy there's no happy and sad for example so what one of their society one of their um ministries there are a few ministries there's a ministry of truth which rewrites history to suit the occasion blurring the line between real and fake i can give you a real life example and again i'm just giving you a modern day example um, the Trump inauguration was rewritten. Sean Spicer tried to rewrite that history, saying that it was the largest inauguration crowd 
ever. And it kind of blurred the lines because he said it as a fact when in fact it wasn't a fact. So what you do with um, the ministry of choose is you blur the line between what is real and what the party wants you to think is real. So in this society, the party consistently changes what happened in the past to suit its needs for the future. Okay? So that's important. And everybody knows this in the society. And everybody accepts it. Also important because you've dumbed down your society enough to outlaw thinking, to have simple words like um, not good and bad, just ungood instead of just use a suffix or a prefix to explain the opposite. You no longer have the opposite word in your language. There's no bad in um, newspeak, which is what their language is called. There's no bad. It's just ungood. Okay? So you have less of a vocabulary. You have a dumbed down society. You outlawed thinking. You have a ministry of truth that blurs the line between real and fake. And you have this new idea of double think. So war is peace. So it teaches their society that you have to constantly be at war in order to be at peace, right? Freedom is slavery. So if you were free, you would be a slave to all your choices and what you could do and blah, 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 which is very similar to what's happening right now um, with social media in our cultures, right? Um, so many choices, dating, online dating, so many choices. It's almost like you're a slave to online dating apps. Just using it as an example. And my favorite, um, ignorance is strength. That's actually true in any society. If you dumb your population down enough, they will follow you blindly like sheep. And from the very beginning of this book, um, Orwell explains this and the importance of it. Because if you have enough sheep following you and none of them are looking up, they all look in the direction that you tell them to look with blinders on otherwise, this is very important because what you've done is you've created a herd of, of followers. Again, it can be easily applied to social media, many governments, not just uh, the American government, but this is why it's important to acknowledge this as um these three themes, these are the party slogans that go throughout the book. And um, you wonder how they can continue like this. Um, you also have, you're introduced to the Ministry of Peace, which is the ministry that wage, wages war. And it tells you who your enemy is for today. Like if um, Joe Schmo over there was a thought criminal, they would put him out there on camera or like public hanging or whatever the case may be and see like, this is your the face of what a criminal looks like. The ministry of love, right? So it's ministry of truth when they're talking about lies, ministry of peace when they're um, talking about war, ministry of love when they're talking about law and order, which is what the ministry of love is, and the ministry of plenty and the thought police. Um, so again, uh, the ministry of plenty does hate sessions. Um, they, they basically feed the seeds of hate, which can be said for a lot of news outlets. And I'm not going to call out any news outlet in modern day society, but basically um, it would be the idea of very one-sided news, bias um, news. Uh, remember that, even for today's society. If a journalist gives you only one side of the argument, whether it be left or right, they are not doing their due diligence by exploring both sides of the argument, which is what I hope I will do for you in many of my videos um, when I discuss the news, but not to be a journalist, just to present both sides of the argument. You should always, in any good written article, they should always have someone from the opposing side of, of the main argument to say their opinion. But that's the problem. In our society today, we just want to be surrounded in a bubble by the people that we know to be in line with our way of thinking. And that is why we have such a great divide between people right now. So um, that's how the Ministry of Plenty can, can actually uh, be looked at in the real world. So understand that in this chapter, he's started a crime, he's, uh, he's 
uh, knows that he will die, or that's what he thinks will happen. Um, we're introduced to the party and what it does and what it's done over the years. And um, the idea of newspeak, double think, and a couple of interesting characters that are kind of come up in the next chapters. So if you like this video, hit like, subscribe, please subscribe because I need people to like, let me know that what I'm doing is useful and um, share. Chapter two coming up.